Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode. I am JB and of course with me is Mark Marsh. Hey everybody. <laughs> so we are back with I think the third part of the tier list. I think ultimately it's going to be a five parter, so <laughs> it's a pretty, pretty big venture, but I'm really looking forward to getting things added back onto this list. So for people that are watching this, maybe this is their first episode, we've done two other parts in the past. I'm going to leave them linked in the description down below. And also, I'm just going to be explaining briefly that we're going to be mentioning the title of the movie and we're going to alternate who has their take first, just so it's not dominated either way and we kind of all get a chance to speak. So kicking things off, we have Scooby-Doo, Abracadabra-Doo. And I think, Mark, if you want to kind of kick me off with your thoughts on where you're feeling for it with this tale is. So I, I didn't really like Abracadabra-Doo that much. It just didn't really feel worthy of a a movie. Maybe as a special, it felt more as a special. I could probably get behind it, but the fact that they made it into a movie just didn't really sit well. And there's some better ones out there as you go along later later on, but I feel like whereas this one was going, it just didn't really feel that great. I felt like it was a rip-off of Hogwarts mostly with magicians. I thought, ah, oh, this could have been a special one to a series or something or an episode. So I don't know. Like, well, to me personally, I put I probably put at the end of mediocre. Same like close. Like it, I want I want to split it in like the C category, as it's one that I wouldn't really go to. So it's right at the bottom of mediocre and probably the top of C. If we're gonna mm-hmm. go with some of like that, because I I really wouldn't put high hopes on it. You see, that's the thing. A lot of people seem to like this one. You know, a lot of people like. Um, is it Madeline that's introduced in this one? Um, you know, like um, Velma's sister that wants Shaggy, and then yeah. Fred simping for that woman. And there's a lot that I don't like. Like everyone really likes Madeline in the comment section. I personally don't. I just think she's kind of just there to be there. It's just something else to distract the audience. And I don't think personality wise, it really. I mean, she didn't do anything for me personally. And Fred simping for women is kind yeah. of it's funny <laughs> to an extent. Maybe the first couple of like times they make a joke about it, but then when it keeps coming up, it's a little bit like, look at like Daphne is right there, Fred. What are you doing? What? Why do you need to? Why do you need to do this stuff? You have a girl. <laughs> you don't need another. Like, like how many does he need? It's like some type it's, of. It's not an anime. <laughs> it's not an anime where you end up with six wives. <laughs> it's just like I'm just there. Like why? The movie feels like six Daphne's. I'd understand, but like yeah. this is just a crazy situation. The only thing really that I look back at this fondly is the fact that this was the first time that we were hearing Matthew Lillard in a movie. I think that's really like the surprising spark of this. Like he's not, you know, levels above everyone else was it this in one? terms of that. I think so. Yeah, because Casey Kasem was the la- the last one he did movie wise was Samurai Sword. Is it? I, I thought. God, I didn't know it was Abracadabra do it was his first one. <laughs> but that's the thing. Like, I love those live actions, but he's not like levels above everyone here. But he perfectly fits into being good, and I think that that's amazing how he translates voiceover. Like, I think he's gotten better oh, yeah, now to an extent. Yeah, it is. But his first I one. think he's good in this, wow. and it was nice to hear him back again, and. I can't remember, but I think this was also the first one of the era where they did like a little song and a little animation for like the opening yeah. titles. I love those so much. Any movie with those in. Because I now it's them. like the norm of when you see a Scooby Doo movie, it has to have a nice animated intro with a funky song that just opens up to where the mystery is supposed to be leading. I think they all have that now. Whereas Monster. before they never used to do yeah, that. So it's like a like a flying minotaur thing. I'm not really into that. So I may agree with you. I think I'd put it. Well, I almost prefer it to Boo Brothers. And possibly Samurai Sword. But I don't think it has the nostalgia. I mean, I think it's technically better than Monster of Mexico, really. But I don't think I've got the nostalgia for it or like at least Monster of Mexico is something like a part of it annoys me, whereas this is kind of just it's on, yeah, because you know, it's background noise. It's, it's like I felt more Hogwarts vibes with it, but then it also felt like that okay, it still feels like they're at a summer camp, 
for magicians. And so there's no real magic whatsoever. It's just the illusion magic that any magician can do. But they try and play on the realization, like there is magic, but there isn't. Yeah, you think so, uh, something like Goblin King has way more magic. Uh, yeah. Go- Goblin King has more magic in it. Whereas this just plagiarizes magic. Where it's just a magic school for people to learn card tricks or put a rabbit out of the hat. I think you're right. I think it would be a really good episode of, say, What's New Scooby Doo? But for a whole movie, I yeah. think it has to do some stuff to just fill out that runtime. And I think it does it quite a lot. So I don't know. I would want to put it maybe above Boo Brothers or just below Boo Brothers. I don't really have much of an opinion either way. But I think it, it does belong more along that bottom area of, you know, mystery or mediocre or whatever that category is called. So where do you feel for this one? Um, Either below or above Boo Brothers or somewhere else? I wouldn't really say it's better than Boo Brothers because at least Boo Brothers had real ghosts. It's definitely... It's definitely above Monster of Mexico. And I'll say it's probably as better than Lock Best Monster. It's it's strange though, because we put Boo Brothers quite a bit like quite on the bottom end of that yeah. category. So And I guess that would make sense in a way because we've you know it's a two person tail list, it's not always gonna work out. So it's a bit tricky really. I think maybe for now we could put it just behind Boo Brothers and then maybe we rejig other things later on. Yeah, so put us like a B for mediocre. But it's like below Boo Brothers. So yeah, that is Abracadabra Do. And so oh okay. I don't know this one could go either way, but this time we have Scooby Doo Camp Scare, which oh, is one of yeah. my absolute favorites. So I think really it's I think I, I like, feel like it. it's Ultra Instinct, you know. I don't oh, think I... it's above Zombie Island or Witch's no, Ghost, but, but it's definitely I in think the S category. Instinct. It has to be S category. Like when I saw this, I instantly got vibes from like the dark tone, like classic Scooby Doo. Mm. Like I was instantly when I was watching, I was I was like the intro caught me by surprise. I wasn't expecting them to do some sort of dark jump scare yeah, horror scythe and with stuff, the scythe and like, that. I was like, like oh. they really made it like Freddy or Jason vibes, where, where it was like in the middle of nowhere, the cabin. I feel like they definitely captured something there and they still made it as a kid show but they explored the elements of making it scary to some degree and it worked i mean it and balanced I, it so perfectly it it so like, perfectly. The like, acts, and then it goes into it. that happy song yeah. about the sub run stuff and it doesn't feel jarring because in the movie it's just there is that happiness but it, then i feel like obviously they don't want to go as dark as zombie island and that's understandable for all we loved it if they want to do a couple of movies every year, that's understandable, fine. But if the, if every single one of the movies was not like the tone of Camp Scare, they don't need to go exactly like that, but the balance between dark and funny, I think it would be amazing. Like yeah. I think with Camp Scare, there's, I've not really got any complaints about it. Maybe the kind of hint at real Supernatural is a bit of an empty promise because they'll then wreck on stuff later. But at the same time, it doesn't really matter. I feel like for what it is... It does well. I mean, you've got the Fred simping, which is yeah. ludicrous still because Daphne's <laughs> there, and, and yeah, obviously, you know, I I like the twist still. though because that they they had like three type of monsters. You got the fish man, fish man, uh, the the, the axe man, the, and the axe the, man, yeah, the yeah. Uh, the wraith in the ca- canyon. So they really explored three key three creepy elements in one movie. Oh, and I, I I love like Mark Hamill as the yeah. villain. And I love how the kid as well is an adult. Oh yeah, the baby was a yeah. baby face Beretta. Or yeah, I'm like, man. <laughs> oh, that caught me by surprise. I was like, I was not expecting the dorky kid who doesn't do anything to actually be 
the main protagonist, like the main villain. It's like that's you how you introduce some backstory it. as well, though. Like Fred, yeah. the reason why he can tie all the knots and he's got access to all this crazy stuff is because he was in camp. You know, he learned all that stuff. Yeah, but I think it's great to get that backstory there. I suppose I, this definitely did come out after. If I was really like, if someone had, um, you know. Uh, the the Velma show to my head and say if you don't give me an answer you have to watch this whole season again. If someone did that just so I could make a complaint about this, I guess formulaic wise it is very similar to the Daddy Daycare sequel, Daddy Day Camp, right? Oh, you know, you've got that... posh camp versus rundown camp. The underdogs from the pot from the rundown camp will ultimately, you know, fry versus the posh camp. Yeah, maybe. Maybe, but then you, that's a that's a tale as old as time. You know, you've got something like that in Monsters University. It's classic underdog story. So I guess it's not really an issue. But I guess if someone was to push me to make a complaint, it would just be that it's very similar to that movie. But I think it's better. I think it's better. So yeah, Ultra Instinct. I Ultra Instinct. Ultra yes. Instinct. Ooh. Definitely deserved it. So Ooh. now we have. Ooh. Scooby Doo, the, the Legend of the Fantasy, oh. which I think has become more renowned for its memes than the movie itself. Yeah. So I'll kick it off <laughs> with you, like what your initial thoughts on this is. As the movie, I I I I always really hated it. I always put it down as like it's a, it's a meme movie. If it's gonna get memed, this is the movie that it would. And I, I just feel like that's the whole gimmick. It's not to be taken seriously. It's just one big joke at the end of it. I feel like I don't think they really thought about what they want to do with it because it, I, I swear, what was it what who Scooby Doo did an episode yeah, on yeah, dinosaurs? Yeah, literally. So when I watch it, I feel like I'm watching an episode of What's New Scooby Doo. And I'm thinking, I, I swear this is a movie, not not an episode. And then if I go back and watch the What's New Scooby Doo one. It's ten times more better than the movie, but it's more shorter. I'm like, they put more time and information into the episode than they did in the movie, because the movie, I, I, the the plot is just one big joke after another. It's like, you went through all that for what? Yeah, I feel you like a... <laughs> your thoughts and opinions on the Loch Ness monster movie yeah. is my thoughts and opinions on this movie. Because, like, literally, the first episode of Watch New Scooby Doo, oh no, maybe the second, but it was like 3D Struction. And it was literally exactly this, but better and less filler. Because in this, yeah. what was it? This is the one where it starts with like Shaggy getting scared, then he gets hypnotized. I feel like that's the best part, yeah. just the memes that came from it. But you can look up like Ultra Instinct Shaggy memes on YouTube. That's the best bit. Watch is that, that the only good and thing? That's is the, the enjoyment scene. of the movie. You can watch it on YouTube or TikTok yeah. or something. So I don't know. I don't know. I would never have thought they would have done that with Ultra Instinct because much as a kid, that I thought, okay, the bar fight scene probably the only best thing about the movie. Maybe a bit of the motorcycle race up, up the top up, when he's on that bike in that as Brave Shaggy. But other than that, the movie sucks. It's like yeah. Shaggy had his great moments, but that's about it. Like there's moments that I feel like they could have done a little bit more with. Like they have like raptors at the end, I think, if my memory is serving me right. And I feel like if there was more like like I don't want to say intimate dinosaurs, but more small scale stuff. So not big T Rex causing problems, but say there were phantom raptors storming yeah. the town. I feel like that would lead to a lot more scary scenes, more potential, more diversity in storytelling, because you didn't need to be out in the open. You could literally be in a house getting hunted by raptors or something to that effect. I think all the raptor stuff I did like, especially when it got to like the biking and stuff. It reminded me a bit of like Camp Cretaceous and stuff like yeah. that. But it was I'll, just I'll all the stuff with the big dinosaurs. Jurassic Park, to be fair. And I think they, they did they do a have... reference, you no, know, which I think it? was maybe one of the best parts, where Shaggy and Skippy were like hiding behind that counter, and they kind of redid that raptor on like the tarp, looking for them. Like that, all that stuff is fantastic. Because they could have done the bathroom bit, but they hide in the bathroom, and then it just knocks down the whole like toilet scene, <laughs> just exposes them. They could have done that. That would open. That would have been good. I think Brave Shaggy is one of the only bit. How does it get triggered again? Is it like danger? 
Ooh, I forget how he goes. Say a word. It is a word. Oh gosh, it's when he gets transformed. I remember it because I felt like the only good scenes is when Shaggy gets activated to brave Shaggy, and and when Fred's there and he's so confused about what's going on (laughs) because he takes charge of initiative and it's like no one's ever seen that like Shaggy before. No, and I almost feel like it was a different story or. If it would happen in another movie, like with a different plot, but other than that, like I do think there is some stuff to be enjoyed in this movie. It's just not the overall movie, so I don't know where to put it. I don't think it's bad enough to be Scooby Don't really, but at the same time, it definitely is 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 under how groovy it isn't how groovy. It's some way down there. I just don't know where it is. Because I think uh, I would put Abracadabra on more before I put this one again. I would put Blue I'll, Brothers I'll on. I've probably watched this more than Abracadabra. You reckon? Because I like that scene, the bar scene, especially when he goes, I'm just here to drink some milk. <laughs> and he's mm. like, and I'm all out of milk. <laughs> I'm just like, and he's in know, a bar, so they can't really have him have alcohol because he's technically. Shaggy's like the oldest, so he's like 18, they're all 17. I think that's the whole age group of the game. Even then, it's it's mad, because even if that was the case, <laughs> where they are in America, you've got to be like 21, which 21 is, is mad. Yeah. Because I've so, like given up now at like 24, so the fact that like, like, and I feel like that's a million years ago that yeah. I did, so it's crazy that it's 21, but it's understandable that they would have Oh yeah, I've got I'm Shaggy. I've got the milk, and now I'm Ultra Instinct, and I'm. <laughs> it's funny. It is funny, and Lillard, his performance sells it absolutely completely. I bet no one would have thought that ten years later it would be memed in a way which people would have never even thought of. Because I love Dragon Ball. Seeing Goku go Ultra Instinct, I would have never have imagined them doing it as that scene because it works so well works perfectly the way he moves now but i'm like he's so brave that he can that he knows how to fight <laughs> should have scared shaggy somehow had the reflexes as well because the yeah, same person think it wouldn't give him more skills yeah, it's was... just not scared he's got he didn't, low he didn't inhibitions become, he didn't become Jet Li or bruce lee in that <laughs> he's moment not martial he's just... arts trained he's just brave but it <laughs> works you know you can buy it you can buy that so we now know shaggy can fight he's just too cowardly to do so Oh, and they do that annoying thing in this one where they give Velma a love interest, and it's and it's then not only that trope, but then it's also the trope of having the love interest that's just you know a female version of that character, which is crazy. Although it's Matthew Gray Glubber, which is cool and interesting, I like that. But maybe what? So you want to put this? Is it above or below Boo Brothers for you? Because I know it's above Abracadabra. I want to say above, yeah, above Boo Brothers. What about Samurai Sword? Above or below? Above what? Samurai Sword. Mm. I'm tempted to say above. That's the Just... hard, they both have good scenes that work well. Oh, I'm trying to think. Out of those two, which one would I watch instantly in a heartbeat? I feel like I That's... would personally put Phantasaur on more than yeah. Samurai Sword. Yeah, let's do that. So, yeah, so just above Samurai Sword? Yeah. That's actually kind of cool, actually. It's actually got some interesting bonus features as well. Ooh, okay. So this is a very divisive one now. This could honestly go either way. I, it's my turn to do it first. So Scooby-Doo, Music of the Vampire. And I feel like this is an interesting one because I like Scooby-Doo. And surprisingly enough, I actually also really like musicals. Like, musicals, I just think they're so funny. I'm a bit more inclined to dark musicals, so Little Shop of Horrors, Sweeney Todd, like, stuff like that. So, love Scooby-Doo, love musicals. Yeah. And so, naturally, a Scooby-Doo musical you think would be my thing. And it isn't not, you know, that first song when they're driving to the location, that, to me, if it was just that song as a music video... I would put that in Ultra Instinct. Yeah. I love the music. The music I, you know, is the, so good. Because <laughs> I, I love it. Retired from solving hair, mysteries. Like, oh, yeah. Like that like... scene 
is Ultra Instinct, Esther. Because it's perfect. It's Everything the first movie it where perfect. they retire. Where they Dance technically the retire, from solving, retire from solving mysteries and they have a song that adds to the intro. It works out so mm-hmm. well. Even the outro song when they're wrapping they, up like, the mystery. Yeah, that is good as well. I feel like bits in the middle could be a bit uh, better. Like Music of the Vampire had good at the start, but I'm good at the end. But I say probably my favourite one as a musical is Stage Right. Mm. So I feel like mm, yeah, yeah, I, I do like Music of the Vampire. I always forget that that one is a musical, you know. I, I do like it as it's a musical. It's pro- probably the first Scooby-Doo musical. So it's a possibility that they can do it. It does work to the audience because people don't hate it. They kind of like in the middle of it. So for me personally, I would say Stage Fright is probably at the uh, like I want to say mediocre. Well, I mean, in terms of music of the vampire, really, um, it's 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 interesting because there's some parts of it that I think is ultra instinct. Yeah, some part of it that I think is. Not Scooby Don't, but but mediocre. Like, I think so there's some stuff like that's clashing. Way, like, it's so it is so clashing. Like the vampire stuff, I don't mind, but it isn't really my thing. I like the vampire that gets a song with Daphne. I think that's all cool because that leads on to. I mean, it is an interesting one because he wants her to be a sacrifice, and when she says, "Oh no, I'm not going to do any of that stuff. I'm not going to do this weird vampire wedding." He just takes her anyway, so it's like, well, what was the point on the musical number yeah. and all that stuff? Like, why not just, you know, gas her with something and just be done it's, with it? It's like, if you were going to kidnap her in the first place, what was the point of the song? You weren't <laughs> going to win her over. Like, I guess he just wanted to see if he could do it with yeah. Riz, and then when he couldn't, he's just like, oh, okay, then, like... Is he like, really, really trying now. to go for the whole Twilight Zone with that bit? It's just <laughs> trying ridiculous. To win her over. And also, the fact that there was a shaggy and Scooby song and it isn't terrible but it gets upstaged by this weird like you think oh look it's a Shaggy and Scooby friendship song which even the live show did and I think did it very well but then it turned from a Shaggy and Scooby friendship song to this weird you know West Side Story um, Rock of Ages dance off between the village people and the vampire haters and the theatre crew like I was like, how did we get from a wholesome Shaggy and Scooby story about friendship to some rock of ages, we're not gonna take it? Like, I don't know. I mean, I wasn't hating it. I'm never bored while watching it. It's just very conflicting. I don't know where to put it. I'm, it has I'm struggling. Stuff. I, I was going to think how groovy, but at the same time, there's so many parts, like you said, that, that, that Scooby, Scooby don't. There's parts that have Ultra Instinct. And it's just trying to find the balance. It's what I want to say. I, I want to put it at the bottom. So it's, it's in the middle of how groovy and mediocre. So it's at the bottom of how groovy, but at the very top of um, mediocre. Oh, I agree, actually. I just it has don't the know best. what to put it, if I should put it literally at the bottom of how groovy or at the top of mediocre. I feel like it doesn't I feel like it doesn't do enough to go home. Put it as like 50 50. So it's all like share in the middle bit. I don't know how that would work. Or or we can put it in the top of B. I think we put it on the top of B. Put it on the top of B. Because it's definitely more fun, right? Than some of these others. Yeah. I just don't see it getting in how groovy just yet. But, yeah. Okay. Oh, <laughs> another one. There's so many weird ones in this area. Oh. We've got big top Scooby Doo now. So I'll kick it off oh, with God. your thoughts on that. I didn't like it. <laughs> I didn't like it. Uh, for me personally, like in the UK, we don't really get a lot of carnivals. No, sometimes so we, we get no- like pop up. We, we get we get but... pop up circuses yeah. with nothing to the big extreme that Americans have, where they would have live stages of lions and tigers on stage now we we just get a few magic tricks and that's about it yeah like hook a duck or something huh? yeah so we don't we don't really do a lot of carnivals to that extent like we have them pop-ups but they're just like ferris wheels and 
some rise and then and then trinkets. That's that sort of nothing to that extreme. Because watching it, it's like the heist was good. The whole story plot of the carnival folk using that as a means to rob from areas they visit makes it very, you know, convincing to the audience. For me personally, I didn't really like carnivals that much because I really thought I never really experienced an actual carnival, but I did like the ploy. So I feel like I want to put it in mediocre. I don't, I don't, I don't feel like it's how groovy, but I, I would watch it occasionally. I feel like how groovy would mean I would watch it a lot. Like I, I probably found like forty percent of the film I enjoyed the most. The other bit I just felt like it was, it was alright. It wasn't the best, but the pull of the highest bit. I actually thought it was really genius of them. They actually used the carnival as the scapegoat on how they get to all these places while robbing them off. But now nowadays, like it's literally Detective 101. Is if you know a circus in town, chances are find the routes they've been, make sure there's not a pattern first before oh, yeah. you follow up on anything else. But back then, like, you know, legit, probably the best thing ever. Because I I think I feel like it was um I feel like there was a movie as well based on the true story that used a similar concept. I feel like Scooby Doo used the idea. Because I remember there was a movie where they based it on the true events of the when people use the circus to do pull up big heists in the area. And it was so such a new thing, no one really suspected at the time. I felt like Scooby Doo stole elements from that movie by incorporating it. So I feel like they drew inspiration from another movie. I mean, there was some stuff that I did love, like the design or premise of the villains, the like the monster yeah. being at the wells. I thought was good. The scene at the end that it was on a train or surrounding a train. I think it was a different dynamic, and I like that. Yeah, everything else is just kind of because yeah. you didn't have oh. one villain; you had multiple villains because it's a circus family. That scene with the the human Scooby. Yeah, that was oh, weird. That... Because they used the gang that they, oh, they they worked there to <laughs> pretty much solve the mystery from the inside. So I feel, I feel like they did a really good job. I probably say I'll probably put it at the top of mediocre if I had to choose. Above music of the vampire, even. I'll say above music of the vampire. Okay, I'm not mad at that. I'll definitely go for that. Um, so that was big top. Yeah. I'm definitely going to have to rewrite all this stuff out. It's getting a bit chaotic. Yeah, my okay. top, I'm running out of room. Oh my God. Your mind's like crazy. I don't know what's, you can never see your mind, but mine's just all types of different <laughs> You've things. You've done yours like a timeline. No, line. I try and like rejig it yeah. just to like, just because well, I I've guess got mine on I the list. almost edit it after so I kind of know what to slot into the screen. But here's an interesting one. And this is one that I've been excited to get onto. Scooby-Doo Mask of the Blue Falcon. Now, I like this one a lot in terms of setting. Like the fact that it's set at a Comic Con is crazy. I love it and I love all the different tropes, like Daphne getting it was almost like a be cool, the fact that she was obsessed with those things, like the littlest fuzzies and that she wanted to collect them all. There was one collectible there that was like twice the price and that is just so relatable from a collector's point of view, just seeing something. The price is ridiculous, but you're like, oh my gosh, yeah. I need to have that one. The intro being all comic booky, like, I feel like as a Scooby person, as a superhero person, and someone that loves the idea and going to Comic-Cons and stuff, I feel like it all works for me, but I feel like some of it I remember that more than the movie itself. Like, Again, there's stuff that I think the movie thinks it's more clever than it actually is, but it not to its detriment. Like, all the stuff about, here's this reboot, it's a dark version of Blue Falcon and Dynamo. Very on the nose. A bit obvious, like, it kind of just reiterates what people make fun of, you know, DC for compared to, like, the original versions. But it doesn't not work. I think it works perfectly fine. But then it's kind of mad how the movie almost criticises like recasting people for a big movie and then and you look that a few years later they kind of did the same thing with scoob so yeah. it's like well uh, i guess that's not aged it's like well. a rinse and repeat 
But I like it, you know. I don't know. I, I really do like Blue Falcon. Where I would put it. I think I prefer this because to Because people can't you know? call it a Batman knockoff because Blue Falcon had its own show. It's its own standalone character with his side sidekick. And it's like, it. I guess you could feel like it's another Cape Crusader, but it's nowhere near like Batman. I feel like Blue Falcon has his own identity, its own trademark on how he does things, a bit like Green Arrow. So for first, so I feel like Warner Bros. did a good job of making this character its own individual character rather than trying to copy another character from another show to make it identical. So they really made sure to have a hero with a cape, you know, doesn't have powers but still can fight crime. And I felt like Blue Falcon was probably the best adaptation they could have done and it definitely works in the movie because I, don't get me wrong I like the Batman and Scooby-Doo crossover ones I feel like they're great they're, there's nothing wrong with them but I feel like it's a different spark when you watch Blue Falcon because you're not what you're not there to watch it for Batman you're, mm. you're there to watch it for you know the team with the new team up with Blue Falcon especially for people who don't watch Blue Falcon and watch for the first time they're going to see something way different than The Dark Knight because it's like a different attitude altogether. He's more well-spoken around people. He's he's not broody or nothing like that, but he still has his own like super villains to confront. So I feel like they did an excellent job and I really did like this film very much, the way they opened it up, the way they led on the story. I feel like it wasn't rushed. It all added up perfectly and it added a bit more information to the people because then you get a bit more understanding, especially from someone who had never seen it before, who these characters are and what the hell is going on. Whereas Batman, you know Batman's there to kick ass. So you don't really need to follow the story too much with Batman. Comes out the shadows and beats up the bad guys and goes away and doesn't talk to people because he's a detective himself. Yeah, But Blue Falcon relies like, on other people. Like that new one where it's like, I'm vengeance. And it's yeah. like, what the <laughs> heck? Like, because like, in the movie, I, I like know. to say, I'm always so used to the memes bit going, I'm Batman, comes out the shadows and grabs people. And I'm there thinking, they could have done, I'm Batman. <laughs> vengeance. <laughs> I'm vengeance. It's like, okay, we, we know that, you're the Dark Knight. <laughs> <laughs> you could have least said... I like that Blue Falcon is here because it's world building as well. Like the amount of Hanna Barbera Easter eggs and the Comic Con scene is perfect. Yeah. The fact that it mirrors the comic book episodes, like all the attacks, is perfect. Uh, uh, see, here's the thing: I'm saying that everything is perfect, and really, I don't have any mad criticisms on it. But at the same time, I'm not tempted to try and put it in Ultra Instinct. You know, I just I, don't I, know I, if it has the scope or vibe, but I like I, it being in How Groovy, you know. How Groovy, I can get behind that, because I agree with you well. I don't feel like it's S-Class. I feel like it's good, but it's not amazing to be in S-Class. I'll say How Groovy is perfect for it. Like, I think it has a concept, and it maybe yeah. does that concept well. It's just the concept in and of itself maybe isn't exactly there. So, it's still like a lot of work for it. Yeah. Hmm. I would almost put it above Cyber Chase, really. Oh yeah, definitely. I'll 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 say it definitely goes above Cyber Chase. Above Pirates of Hoy or below Pirates of Hoy? I think maybe just below even. I want to say it's like deserves the top spot name. The top of how groovy. Yeah. Because it definitely earned it. I don't know. I don't feel like I'd put it on. Well, I'm saying this now. I'm not sure. I don't feel like I'd put it on as much as Aloha. But then again, I guess it's just because it's the time of year that it's summer movies. Alien Invaders? I think I actually would put this one on before Alien Invaders in some regards. Above Goblin King, though. Again, yeah. Goblin King is very Halloween-y, so it's difficult with the seasonal ones. It's a superhero one. You can probably watch any season. 
Whereas Batman, I guess you could, they do have seasonal villains. So Batman, there's like, depending on the movie, there are seasonal traits. Mm. <laughs> like Batman and Mr. Freeze. Like, where would you place that movie? It's seasonal. Because <laughs> it's definitely a winter because of his ice. It is strange. Maybe for now, oh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to say, like, keep it like A, but oh. I'd almost for now just want to put it in the middle of A. Yeah, just put it in the middle of A. So possibly just below Ghoul School for the time being. Yeah, because we can just readjust it. Yeah. Yeah. But the How Groovy section has got quite a bit more in it than I was even expecting. Oh, okay. This is an interesting one. Okay, the last one is Scooby Doo Adventures Mystery Man. Oh God! So <laughs> give me, <laughs> give me what you've got about that. Oh my God! Oh my God! It's oh God! I want to say it's Swamp Gas. I'm sorry, that just might be me, me there, but it's like. A puppet Scooby Doo bit. I was like, "Why? Why would you go with that? It does not work with Scooby Doo. It just doesn't." Oh god, I felt pup named Scooby Doo. I would rather watch that religiously than the adventure mystery maps again. Because even the title as well, Scooby Doo Adventures, the mystery map. Like, what are they trying to go with? Because it came out when it's it's on DVD. It comes with a slip coming out, but they also did something else as well. I swear they did a another puppet Scooby Doo bit as like a special short. Hmm, I don't know oh. where it was part of this DVD as a special, but they they definitely did another one as part of it. But I just didn't like it. I just felt it felt like they went back to a puppet named Scooby Doo era, but in puppet form. And I'm like, how did you go backwards when you look at it? We had Master of the Blue Falcon in February. And then three, four months later, you give us this. It's like, why? We didn't ask for it. No one thought, let's add to the younger audience by giving them puppets. No. It's like, hand puppets would have probably been better. I I, I with me, I just didn't like it one bit. It missed out on the perfect opportunity to call it a puppet named Scooby. Yeah. I don't know they, why they didn't do that. But they, I don't they know. could have just done a series, like a puppet series. And then done a movie, it would have made sense because you had that audience watching the puppet bit just for baby kids. And then did the movie. But doing a movie on video means that parents have to buy it for the kids and then be disappointed they spent £10 on it. See, this is mad though, because I don't want to put it in Swamp Gas purely for the fact that I don't think it's egregious enough. Like, I don't think the idea at its core is rotten necessarily or maybe i like a bit more than you i think it's the definition for me of a scooby don't because i respect them for trying something different because i feel like what warner brothers has become recently is so lazy they'll try and do the same things over and over again or they'll phone out things they won't give us special features and stuff like that nowadays they won't even release their movies and so for them to go well we could make animation movies two every year or we could spend a bit more money on puppeteers, on puppets, on sets, and stuff like that. The fact that they tried something different, I'm kind of like, I respect that. And in terms of aesthetics, the actual set designs, the fabric of the sets, the look of the sets, and the puppets themselves, for all I don't think they work in the setting, I feel like from an aesthetic point of view, and even a performance point of view, I quite like it. And again... It was a bit of a difficult situation where we were in between Velma's, like Mindy Cohen had either been fired or she'd quit or something. Yeah. And it was before Kate McCucci. So we got Stephanie DeBruzzo, who I kind of wish we had as Velma over Kate McCucci, but that's because I, I don't really like Kate McCucci's performance. So there's stuff I like. It's just I don't feel like it works. Like I feel like it tried, yeah, and sometimes yeah. you try and fail. It definitely did fail. I don't think it's very good. It. I don't watch it. I don't like watching it. But at the same time, I don't feel like it ruined anything or tarnished anything. It was just 
after we tried something different, it didn't work. Yeah, because they had different voice actors for the puppeteers. No, 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 the voice cast. So they, they did it in like two different ways because when you do pu- puppets, you're going to have puppeteers and you have voice cast. So the puppeteers are talking first and then that gives the voice cast the correct keys to voice over them correctly. So so really, we had two Shaggies. Let's just face it that. We had two Shaggies, Eric uh, Jacobson, and we had obviously Math- yeah, Matthew, Matthew as well uh... doing the proper main voice over. I wish, like, I, 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 I'll, I'll give cruel, him credit. Though. I'll give him I credit say... where it's due because doing puppets in craft, really, to, to craft is a bit like doing South Park back in the old days where it was all snapshots, like still images, one scene after the other. It takes a lot of time because you won't know until you've gone back over the footage if that's what you wanted. Because if you mess up the puppets or the strings get tangled, that's it, you got to redo the entire scene. And you could film a movie bit, props to them, because I wouldn't have thought them doing a movie with puppets, especially when they haven't done that before. Okay, yeah, you may have got puppeteers, but it's a lot of work. Look at Sesame Street or The Muppets. They are a show dedicated to that profession. They could have easily done a partnership with one of them, incorporated it, and done a crossover that way. Would Would have been way much more better. But with this, they should have done it as a series, broke it down into segments, and then gave us that. Because they've done segments before, so it works. So they could have done that and then done the movie, and it would have made some sort of more sense because you have an audience for it. But there's a lot of work going into it, and I was like, it didn't really fit the mood. I'm not saying the puppets were bad. I would love to purchase one of the puppets, you know, to have them, of course. I felt like the whole story bit is like visually you couldn't really do much with it. It was just no. like you it's can't like, really do the whole classic Shaggy and Scooby um traits. I feel bad though because I do feel like they did a lot that they didn't need to do and definitely wouldn't do now, be it for better or worse in terms of risk taking. They just didn't work. So I would want to put it at the bottom of Scooby Don't. I don't think it's Swamp gets as far as yeah with how lazy Warner Brothers are. I don't want to be like I'm discouraging every time that they've tried something new and different. But this one definitely didn't work. It didn't work. But I'd want to put I, it I, below. I'll say below. Chill out. I'll say at the bottom of C. Yeah, put it at the bottom of C. Oh gosh. I knew that I'd have to write with the pen the wrong way then. Okay. So I guess that does it for this part of the tier list. Definitely interesting. I feel like a lot of this one could be changed in the next part because this this batch of movies has been so, so hit, not just a hit and miss, but in their own movies themselves, it's been so there's been stuff that's really worked and been stuff that hasn't. It's been very... A weird era, you know, some mixed movies. So it's interesting to see where all these end up. But yeah, do stay tuned for the next few parts of the tier list. I think the next one's going to be another one that's a bit more experimental. But then we're going to be finishing it off in the next part as well. Although I think it's, then it's when it gets the part five, five that's well, when, which is interesting. Yeah, because when we get the part five, that's when we're going to tackle the um probably our first swamp gas that we can both agree on <laughs> they literally swamp gas uh it's gonna be interesting to see but yeah i think for the purpose of this video um at least the section of it mark where can people find you on the internet you can find me on my twitter page at i luigi or over my instagram page at mark marsh 94 or on my youtube channel as i like to post stuff on my community page Mm, that's incredible i'll leave all that link in the description (laughs) down below thank you everyone for watching and if you do want to see more then please like comment and subscribe and we'll see you next time